A few years ago, I made a review of the original Mafia game, a game that I absolutely love. And to save you the time of watching that review that I made when I didn't really know what I was doing, I mean, I threw the word analytical in the title because I thought it made me look smart. Uh, let me summarize it for you quickly. My whole argument was that it wasn't Mafia's story that made it so special. It is a great, well-told story, don't get me wrong, but Mafia was instead all about realism and immersion. I know they're marketing buzzwords, but hear me out. Uh, it was an open-world crime game developed by a studio that made military simulation games, so it ended up prioritizing simulating the life of a 1930s mafioso above pretty much everything else. It didn't care about cars being enjoyable to drive, it instead made them struggle to get up hills and feel like the heavy chunks of steel that they were. It made you make your daily commute and learn the streets of the city, no matter the impact on the game's pace. The very lethal and at times unfair combat has that old school Rainbow Six slowly peeking around corners vibe to it, and levels are designed to be closer to real life buildings or farms or parking lots rather than video game levels. Effectively, Mafia ended up turning a lot of people away because of its at times frustratingly stubborn commitment to realism, which is more than valid, but for those that it does click with, it really gets its hooks in and there's nothing else quite like it. So naturally, I was very cautious of this remake, and I know it's such a typical cliche thing for someone who loves an original work to be hypercritical or even hate a remake or adaptation simply because it isn't familiar. So the reason this video is coming out so long after the game came out is just because I needed time to navigate my biases, and man, at first I was repulsed by a lot of things and I just wanted to nitpick everything. The way our protagonist Tommy throws grenades is just ridiculous, there's now a ram button which you can exploit to turn sharper corners easier, the Tommy gun and shotguns aren't as satisfying to shoot, few second long cutscenes interrupt the gameplay too often, the garage being a list of cars that you pick from rather than a physical garage full of cars just isn't as cool, uh, cars get added to the garage by simply hopping in them rather than driving them to the garage, the game's soundtrack is a lot more generic, Tommy's facial expressions are a bit too Mass Effect Andromeda sometimes, and I could go on with more and more petty nitpicks like this, so I feel like I need to stress that I do think this remake is a good game. It's hard not to recommend it, and it's easily one of the better big budget games to come out this year, but there's a lot to unpack regarding just how it changes things, and which changes are improvements, and which are not. Tommy's gone from a mild-mannered, goofy everyman to an overly enthusiastic wise guy suit model. His partner in crime, Paulie's Danny DeVito demeanor, is now more sinister and almost Joker-like at times, and Don Salieri is less of a calm father figure and more of an energetic hothead who isn't afraid to join in with the bands. Uh, these characters may have the same names and play the same roles here, but they're actually quite different, which is a bold choice for a remake that wasn't easy to stomach as a fan. On top of that, the immersion stuff had me bouncing off this remake even more. There's now very video gamey collectibles scattered about, which just goes against the original game's design entirely, and in the first mission, which sees you trying to lose your pursuers, you're told to drive up to certain construction sites around the map, and if you do, a cutscene will play where you drive through safely and one of your pursuers will crash. You don't need to think like you're in that situation to outmaneuver those chasing you, which is what it was like in the original. Instead, your job is to get to that construction site so the game can take control away, interrupt that immersion, and do the work for you. Combat has switched from the careful, high recoil, low time to kill affair to a more familiar, controller friendly, contemporary cover shooter. You now get a Call of Duty esque kill confirmation every time you kill an enemy, which is again very video gamey, as is a lot of the level design, which sacrifices realistic layouts and architecture for scattered waist high cover and corridors. Take the docks for example, where before it was like a big group of buildings and shipping containers laid out in a very open natural way where you had to navigate your way around. In the remake, it's instead very cramped, very linear, and there's plenty of cover laying about like you've seen in other modern cover shooters. Realism is swapped for a more curated, fast paced and up close experience. They really don't want you to get lost or for there to be any slow moments. Another example is the A Trip to the Country mission. The two games differ in the same ways, with the remake having a much more Hollywood bravado to it, which extends to the sound design. Listen to how the original game favors a stormy ambience over the remake's high tempo. Push 
Something I never liked about A Trip to the Country was how it ended with you shooting down the gangsters chasing you. It always felt a little too over the top to me, but the remake seems to think that it wasn't over the top enough, and now it has a whole bunch of police in a giant armored van with a turret hunting you down, which is just completely out of place. Like, it, it, it's just absurd. Now, in fairness, there are other levels that are designed fairly realistically, like the prison tower or the paddle steamer or the bank, and these levels are more memorable because of this, but the mission design still feels very linear, more restrictive, and less inspired when compared to the original. Like with the bank heist, the original game has you and Paulie walking in and seeing the bank operate normally as he tells you the plan under his breath. It builds up a lot of excitement and establishes the location for when you later return to try and execute the heist. In the remake, the plan is quickly laid out during a cutscene, a cutscene which ends with you bursting into the bank and telling everyone to get down before the mission starts. Uh, in the actual heist in the original game, you and Paulie walk in during gameplay, not during a cutscene. You start the heist yourself and you watch the AI react to your actions, which is much more involved and I know I'm sounding like a broken record, it's way more immersive. I just really appreciated how fully committed the original game was to realism, so you can see why I was disappointed. It's obvious that Mafia Definitive Edition has a different vision. It's made by Mafia 3's American dev rather than the original Czech dev, and it's clear that they were trying to adapt it to the modern market, synergize it with Mafia 2 and 3, reach a wider audience, and most importantly, they really didn't want to alienate people in the same way that the original 2002 game did. Which is why we now have difficulty options, with the hardest being the classic difficulty aimed at fans of the original, which forces you to have the police response and driving mode settings set to simulation. With these settings, the police are pretty much the same as they were in the original, and though the driving felt heavier and a little more true to life in the original, I love the driving here too. You can feel the suspension struggling around every corner, and reaching top speeds is thrilling and dangerous. Uh, manual transmission is back if you want to use it, though unfortunately you can't plug in a racing wheel this time around, and motorbikes have been introduced and implemented effortlessly. They're zippy, they're challenging, they fishtail when you lose grip, and altogether riding a bike or driving any other vehicle is just delightful, and you can feel the care that's gone into it. The chase missions in particular were massive highlights for me, and compared to contemporary open world games, this driving is as enjoyable as it gets. If the vehicles were a little heavier and slower off the line, a little less artificially stuck to the ground, and the ram button wasn't a thing or it at least wasn't exploitable, this driving would be comfortably ahead of the original game, though again I'm nitpicking. As it stands, it is exceptional. Through the campaign though, there's simply less driving to be done. In the old game, you typically started a mission at Salieri's bar, drove to where you needed to go, and at the end of the mission you drove back to Salieri's bar. It functioned as a build up before each mission, a calm down afterwards, and it allowed you to choose which car you wanted to take where you could unlock more cars by doing car theft side missions on your trip back to the bar. Most importantly though, it was another way of putting you in Tommy's shoes. You adopted his routine commute, and in doing so you learnt the ins and outs of the city, constantly checking the map early in the game to remind yourself where you needed to turn, and then by the end you'd learn the place so well that you rarely needed to check anymore and you were thinking like you were actually there. Through the constant scanning for landmarks and making notes of shortcuts, as well as sensibly driving because of the police, you began to act and feel like a citizen of Lost Heaven, and through that you noticed the changes the city underwent over the almost decade-long period the story was told in. Buildings went from under construction to finished, as did an entire section of the city, uh, cars got newer and better, and businesses went from closed during the depression to open again once it was lifted. The remake minimizes the commutes in favor of pacing everything up. Missions often start and end on location, there's no more car theft side missions, and though you can collect cars, you're rarely given the opportunity to use them, because even when you do start at Salieri's bar, where you can pick what to drive from the garage, they'll frequently force you into a certain vehicle anyway. You also don't get to know Ralphie, Vincenzo, or Sarah's dad well at all anymore, simply because you're not at the bar as much, and Lucas, the car side mission guy, is barely in the game at all. It doesn't help that while driving you can just stare at your minimap most of the time rather than looking at the road to get around. Most of the gameplay I recorded is from my initial playthrough before the game was patched where there was no other option but to have a super obnoxious diamond on the screen telling you where to go next and to have the GPS telling you where you needed to turn and I, I absolutely hated it. 
Uh, thankfully, you can now switch that stuff off in the options menu, which is great, except for when you're driving. You either have to have both the minimap and the speedometer on the screen, where the minimap shows that annoying diamond, or you can have neither the minimap or the speedometer, which is a problem when police chase you for driving too fast. It's both or it's neither, you can't just have the speedo. Uh, thankfully, you can toggle limiting your top speed to the speed limit, but hopefully another patch fixes this problem. The city no longer transforms and evolves over time, or at least it doesn't much. Uh, if it did, I just didn't notice it because of how much less commuting there is, and because I was staring at the minimap the whole time, and sadly you can no longer board trains or trams to get around. So while the city has been beautifully recreated here, like, it doesn't need to be said, but this game is absolutely gorgeous, even when I'm running it on a PS4 Slim rather than anything better, you don't nearly feel the same connection to it that you did in the original. And alongside the kill confirmations and the collectibles and the Hollywood shootouts and everything else, immersion clearly isn't the goal of the Mafia remake, and in turn, stuff like the very hard classic difficulty and the realistic police system and the driving physics feel less complementary to this remake's design principles and more like a novel leftover relic from the original game. It feels like the remake uses an old school health pack system because the original game did, not because it necessarily should. The infamous race is absurdly difficult again on classic mode, but where in the original they made it hard because it would be difficult to win a race, here it's like a nod and a wink to old fans in an otherwise more conventional game. The same can be said about the taxi missions, they're just in here as a throwback. The classic difficulty in particular really highlights some of the problems with the combat. Uh, when you're crouched behind cover, you can't peek around the side of that cover, you'll only ever stand up straight to peek, which is a problem when you die to one or two shots and need as much cover as you can get. So you try blind firing, but that only seems to get you killed too, as it makes you much more vulnerable than it probably should. It's also annoying that enemies virtually don't get aim punched at all. You'd think that when you shot one of them, they'd flinch and they'd grab their wounds for a second, giving you a window to land a follow-up shot, but no, they just full steam ahead and continue firing back as if nothing happened, which means you need to time your shots when they're not shooting rather than try to disrupt them. This is something that GoldenEye got right 23 years ago, man. Like, enemies absorbing bullets like it's nothing just isn't very satisfying and it takes away a lot of the punch. Couple this with some sticky, slightly cumbersome movement, and the higher difficulty really only serves as an annoyance. If anything, the combat is better on easier difficulties because it's more forgiving of these quirks. I would have loved to have seen enemies carry wounds and hobble around, and that would have helped with the whole realism thing, but I think this is one of those situations where I just had to let go of the original game as much as I could, and that took a bit of time. Mafia Definitive Edition flat out doesn't achieve what the original game did, but that's not to say that it doesn't improve upon it in its own ways. On the surface, the visuals and voice acting are vastly superior, and more time is given to flesh out Polly and Sam, as well as Tommy's wife Sarah, who is basically just an awkward polygonal sex scene in the original. The dialogue has been rewritten, and the writing is more natural across the board. And what's my end of the deal? Ask you want money? Some sort of immunity? None of that. I got people I need to protect. Ah, families. Always the Achilles heel, ain't it? So who you got? A sick ma or a wife and a litter of kids? Wife and daughter. And no one else to watch your back, I'm guessing. Wouldn't be here otherwise. Did he that? The scenes with Detective Norman are particularly well done. The ebbing and flowing tension between them and the back and forth banter is just so captivating. And if you're unfamiliar, Mafia's story is framed by our protagonist Tommy Angelo giving dirt to this detective in return for witness protection as we flash back through his stories with the Salieri mob. Think Goodfellas. While Tommy is picking and choosing the stories he's telling the detective, there's an argument to be made that it makes sense for him to also not tell him about every single commute to and from a destination. He obviously wouldn't go into every boring detail like the original game kind of does, so here he doesn't, and the story feels much more focused and fast-paced as a result. 
Tommy really only recalls the bad times he had. He'll mention in passing that he had some fun, but then he'll elaborate on the rough situations he went through or the stress it put on his wife. And through this, Mafia's story and central theme squares in on the lie that is the mobster high life. Nobody in this gang ends up in a better place because of it. Don Salieri's change from a Vito Corleone style father figure to just another one of the boys reflects that just like Tommy, he's also another member of this futile rat race. Like Tommy, he's seen to struggle and lose control in his desperation. And this change in character took a bit of getting used to, but it is a smart change. Tommy, on the other hand, takes a lot more getting used to, but he also wasn't changed for no reason. Making Tommy a relatable everyman was part of the original game's efforts to put you in his shoes, but in the remake where this is no longer a priority, Tommy is instead more malevolent. He's at times uncomfortably enthusiastic about getting violent, not in a super overt way, but he'll get excited to enact revenge or just smile a bit when he's seeing an enemy getting beaten to death. And considering the sheer amount of people Tommy kills, him being like this is actually more believable in a way. You have to have some screws loose to be able to do the things he does, and you don't have to suspend your disbelief as much now because he does seem to have some screws loose. What they've essentially done is sacrificed relatability for believability, and Mafia Definitive Edition is acutely aware of this change. Take the hotel scene where Tommy is set on a mission to kill a sex worker who's been leaking information to a rival gang. In the old game, he simply can't bring himself to kill her, so he makes her leave town and stay silent. Now, Sam actually asks him not to kill her beforehand, so he obliges as a favor to Sam rather than for any sympathetic reasons. Later on, when he lets Frank go, it actually is out of sympathy, but of course he's personally friends with Frank, and it's clear that Remake Tommy has a more loyal personality, caring only about those in his circle, and no one else matters. You can dive into any of the character changes and also rationalize the decision making behind them in the same way. Uh, Sam is more boisterous and less distant, which gives his character more emotional impact, and Paulie, like Tommy, is made to be more malevolent for the same reasons as Tommy. Because the remake isn't trying to immerse you all the time, the developers have given themselves breathing room to write characters that fit into the story in a more pragmatic way. Ironically, the story here is more believable. These characters fit their actions even better than the characters in the original game did, and they're fleshed out to a further extent with extra banter, backstories, and way better performances. But again, you won't relate to any of them nearly as much. They're simply more repulsive people. So instead of becoming Tommy, you're watching this story from afar. You have to just hop on the roller coaster, let go, and let his arc and this story play out. And if you can do that, you're in for an extremely well-paced, well-told, stylish tale with deeper characters than the original game had. The only part that I think the remake really botched when it comes to the story is the ending. Uh, I should give a spoiler warning here if you haven't played either game, so skip to the next timestamp on the YouTube player or to the time displayed on the screen right now if you don't want to see the ending of Mafia Spoiled. Uh, if you're still here, let's continue. Both games end with a Batman speech from Tommy, and we know Remake Tommy values his family and the people around him more, so he speaks about how family is the most important thing in life. Remember that money, jobs, even best pals will come and go, but family, family is forever. Compare this to the original, where Tommy's takeaway is more of a wider point. You know, the world isn't run by the laws written on paper. It's run by people. Some according to laws, others not. It depends on each individual how his world will be, how he makes it. And you also need a whole lot of luck, so that somebody else doesn't make your life hell. And it ain't as simple as they tell you in grade school. But it is good to have strong values and to maintain them in marriage, in crime, in war. Always and everywhere. I messed up. So did Polly and Sam. We wanted a better life, but in the end, we were a lot worse off than most other people. You know, I think it's important to keep a balance in things. Yeah, balance, that's the right word. Because the guy who wants too much risks losing absolutely everything. Of course, the guy who wants too little from life might not get anything at all. 
Tommy's speaking to Mafia's overall themes here, whereas the remake speaks to Tommy's personal values and his motivation for going into witness protection, that being the protection of his family. And I don't think that's anywhere near as impactful. For all their differences, both games do share the same core ideas around greed and power, and the first game gives some finality to those ideas, whereas the remake just awkwardly falls flat. It just feels like a random Dom Toretto speech, and it doesn't resonate nearly as much. And as a whole, Mafia Definitive Edition just doesn't resonate as much. It doesn't aim as high, it isn't as bold or experimental, it doesn't involve you as much, and I can't help but be disappointed by it because the original game proved what heights it could have, and honestly should have, reached. While you can rationalise and justify a lot of the changes, it's just not a game that will stick with you for a long time or impress you with clever level design, and it certainly doesn't push the envelope in any meaningful way. But if you can stomach that this game isn't the original and look at it simply for what it is, Mafia Definitive Edition ticks all the video game review boxes. I know this is a bit reductive, but it has a great story, it has fantastic driving, it has beautiful graphics, it has decent enough Uncharted-y shootouts, it has no notably dull or repetitive moments, and it must be said that the fact that this released at a budget price is just amazing. It's refreshing to play a modern AAA open world crime game that cuts the fat so much, and especially one that that cares about making driving more interesting and enjoyable than just a basic way of getting around. As a remake, this is something of a letdown that I won't be replaying like I do with the original game, but on its own, despite it being a little rough around the edges and lacking in ambition, Mafia Definitive Edition earns my appreciation as a focused, charming, and enjoyable trip back in time. And with that, we wrap up the video. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you can, you know, click like and subscribe and hit the bell and comment and do all the stuff that helps out the YouTube algorithm. Or you can support on Patreon. It all sort of helps. Um, sorry if this video was a little more echoey than my videos usually are. Uh, I just sort of moved into a new place and I'm still trying to figure out, you know, how to use the microphone good and put the foam on the walls. And I think I need to buy a carpet to reduce echo even more. Um, so apologies for that. And uh, I didn't talk about the free ride mode in Mafia Definitive Edition, which was also a mode in the original game where it's sort of a separate thing from the story, and you run around doing side content and finding secrets, and it's kind of goofy and cool, and it sort of has a sense of humor that the main story mode doesn't, um, but it just doesn't interest me that much, and it always felt a little half-baked. But people seem to like it here, so, you know, if you are thinking about buying the game, then maybe that's something that could sway you. Um, but yeah, I don't really have anything to say about it. I didn't find it that enjoyable or interesting. It's just, it's just sort of a bunch of very simple, uh, side content. And, uh, interestingly, uh, Lucas Bertone, the side mission guy, has actually been sort of relegated to this free ride mode in the new game. So his side missions feel like they've been cut from the main game and, uh, added in here, which I think is kind of interesting. But yeah, it just, otherwise, not really my thing. And uh, yeah, now I want to thank all my patrons, so thank you to all my patrons. Thank you to all the patrons coming up on the screen right now. And uh, this is going to be a really long list, so I'm going to try and say them as quickly as I can. Uh, so we have my $5 patrons, which I want to thank. Uh, Analog Man, Anthony Gallagher, Anthony Heisel, Aradina Varin, Big J, Blake Barnett, Boggy Online, Connor Salinas, Cuggles, Daniel Gold, Devin Grandal, Dominic Chikoki, Doe Pants, Down the Cat Hole, Evil Chicken, Hazardous Kirby, Jared Kernop, Jay Gouls, Jenny McGlynn, Kane Ramsey, Kayla Labcat, Lucas Ray Sevic, Maximilian Kunzman, Maya Reese, Mizaki, Melanie G, Michael Brennan, Mini Me Prefers Shorter Patreon Names, Mustache Duct Tape, Oscar, Peaceful Kumquat, Pewix, Plague, Raven, Riddlin for Kids, Salakin Sequa, uh, Scott Hazlitt, Sky Panthera, <laughs> uh, The Paul Gun of Doom, Tia, Terence Clint, Test Drive Unlimited 2, The Last Great Opium Den, Traplor Ross, Trevor Corbin, Trixie Emerson, Riding on Games, and Zindictive. Thank you all for supporting. Thank you everyone for watching, if you if you're still watching. And um, yeah, I'll see you all in the next in the next video. Take it easy. Bye.